Good morning. We are so glad to have all of you here worshiping our Lord together in person. Yay. Oh, it was uh, difficult to take a step backward in time last week and meet only uh, online. And so I'm glad that we were able to move forward again and uh, be part of in-person worship. Glad you're here today. It feels good to see everyone's faces. Um, or at least your eyes. <laughs> Some of you haven't changed a bit. <laughs> All righty. Um, we're, we're so pleased to have Silent Night with uh, Rebecca playing for us. Um, it was a real treat to have her do all of these uh, hymn, or I mean harp pieces that she's put together for us. It's delightful to hear that. I think I remember telling you that I grew up with harp music. Our uh, senior minister's wife was a harpist, and so I grew up with that, and it's just so comforting to me to hear harp music, so it's a real treat. I just love it. So uh, anyway, wanted to thank Rebecca for being a part of our worship this morning in that way. So announcements, um, our charge conference is this coming Wednesday night. We are hoping to have as many people as possible to join us for this Zoom meeting. Um, if you have indicated to me that you want to be part of this and uh, you don't get the link by Tuesday morning because the meeting is Wednesday night at seven o'clock on Zoom, um, if you don't have the link by Tuesday morning, email me and say, hey, where's my link? Because I really, really want as many people as possible to be a part of this. Uh, remember last year we uh, had it all set up and then just the district superintendent and I showed up and she was um, mildly miffed. <laughs> and so she said, we need to have more of your people next year. So. Uh, anyway, I'm hoping we can get as many of you as possible. So like I said, if you told me I want to be there um, and you don't get the link by Tuesday morning, email me and say, where's my link? And we'll get it to you. All righty. Um, our Christmas Eve service will be at 3 o'clock on Christmas Eve. Our thinking behind that is we're trying to uh, get as many of you to be able to come as possible. I know many of you don't drive after dark and then others of you work and we're hoping that those of you who have to work Christmas Eve will be able to be here by three o'clock. Um, again, masks are required. And just to let you know, we're, we're gonna do something a little different with communion. We're, I've been picking the brains of my colleagues who are Lutherans and Episcopals who have communion every week. And, you know, I, I said, you know, are, are you serving your people in person or what are you doing? And uh, they're saying, what if we gave you a choice of staying in your pew with the pre-filled communion cup and wafer, or you can come forward and get the pre-filled cup and wafer if that's what you'd like, or we can serve you a piece of bread if you'll hold your hands, you know, like this, and then the server would have gloves and we would drop it into your hands because we don't want to touch, you know, so we'd drop it in your hands and then, um, uh, and then you would have the pre-filled cup for the cup. Um, so we're trying to, because to me, communion is serving the people. <laughs> 
and it's lost a little bit of the oomph it should have when I say to you, now take your wafer. And it's just so coming forward and, and allowing me to serve you and that kind of thing is so meaningful. But anyway, we're going to try that. And then I need feedback as to whether that worked or not. And uh, we'll move forward that way. So we're going to try it on Christmas Eve, just to let you know. Okay. Um, other announcements. Yesterday we celebrated the life of uh, Velma Anderson here. Uh, it was a lovely service and uh, um, it was just hard to say goodbye to someone who's been such a longtime member of the church and such a lovely individual. But I would ask that you keep her in prayer and wane um, as we go forward in our worship service. And let's see, do we have any other announcements, Jude? Oh, we didn't do December birthdays yet. Oh, Want to do that? Yeah. Let's do that. December birthday, people, this is for you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday. All right, our first hymn is Angels We Have Heard on High, and uh, the words are on the screen. Let's sing to the glory of God.
you please join with me in the call to celebration? God is in our midst. Do not fear. God rejoices to renew our lives in steadfast love. Trust in God who is our strength and life. With joyous hearts, we will tell of God's glorious deeds. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me and his holy name. Today we look with joy to Mary and the Savior that grows in her womb. Mary sang boldly when she might have been meek. She carries the beginning of a mighty revolution as the proud are brought down and the lowly are lifted up. Today we give thanks for the Marys among us who step out of the roles society has planned. Unintended pioneers determined to do as God asks, fearless and fearfully stepping out in faith and beckoning us to do the same. On this third Sunday of Advent, we light this candle, this pink candle, a joy candle as a symbol of Mary, mother of God, bearer of the way, and in joy of the anticipated birth of the Christ child. We lit the other two candles. We had one for hope. We had one for joy, I mean love. And today we light the candle for joy. People of God, rejoicing, we remember the promise of your son. As light of this candle of Christ come upon us, brightening our way and guiding us by his truth. May Christ our Savior bring life into the darkness of our world and to us as we wait for his coming. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I would invite you to join with me in our community prayer. Loving God, we rejoice in this season of anticipation as we remember your promises and look forward to the ways that you reveal yourself to us. May your presence be real to us in this hour. We give thanks that you have called us into community and commissioned us to make a difference in the world. Equip us for the tasks you set before us. Amen. As we go to a time of prayer this morning, I would ask that you be in prayer for our charge conference on Wednesday. I would also ask for prayers for Bowen Eklund. Uh, this is an infant. He was born on November the 19th. Uh, he has had major surgery 
and uh, hopefully that has resolved some problems that he's having that he was born with but we're asking for prayers for Bowen and also we're asking for prayers for all the tornado victims in the various states that happened but uh, especially those in Kentucky where the damage was the most severe but certainly all of those folks who were affected. Um, Anna Hurley's cousin, Donna Reynolds, lives in Missouri, and um, she fell and broke her nose and bruised her face and broke her left arm, and she's left-handed. So we ask for prayers for Donna Reynolds. Also, I would ask you to be in prayer for most of the Charrington family, although I'm sure the entire Charrington family would appreciate your prayers. Um, Joe was vaccinated, um, Johnson & Johnson, if it makes any difference, but she was vaccinated and um, has COVID pretty badly. She went to the ER, she was sent home with oxygen, and, um, but they have to monitor her levels closely. If it dips below a certain point, she'll have to go back to the hospital. Uh, Bill is ill as well. He's vaccinated. Not, he was with one of the other uh, vaccines, but anyhow, he um, is not as sick as Joe, but still sick. And so we're praying for them. Um, the two boys, Dylan and Sean, are getting better and better, but that whole household uh, has COVID and we're asking you to keep them in prayer because uh, it's, this is not one of those things where you say the family that has COVID together eats together or whatever. You know, this is a serious thing and, and we wanna lift them up and uh, ask for prayers. Now, Richard is fully recovered. He was tested again by the health department um, and declared COVID free, so he's fine. And Tommy and Dinah, God bless them, have not gotten it, but they don't live with the rest of the family. So I um, wanted to lift up. I know some of you are thinking, oh dear, this part of the family is here, but they don't all live together anymore. <laughs> so just wanted to put your minds at ease and yet solicit your prayers for uh, the Charrington family. It's been very stressful for those who are trying to care for the parents. So appreciate your prayers for all of them. As we go forward, I know that there are folks on your own hearts, people you know who need your prayers. This is a time when we can just stop in our busy days, stop what we're doing and intentionally lift them up to our Lord. So I would ask that you join me in silent prayer. Let us pray. God of all life, on this third Sunday in Advent, we find ourselves eager at the future to come. Christ our Lord comes into our earth once again with power and authority, masked with the humility of a child. As the friends he called to walk in his footsteps, we pray for the wisdom and the power to do the same. We pray to speak words and to do deeds of power truly in your name and with the humility to consider ourselves no higher than the neighbors that cross our path. On this day, we lift these ideals as we lift all of our hearts in prayer. 
although we exemplify the joy that you've given to us, we cannot deny the weights of sorrow and difficulty this world brings. We pray for the brokenness of our world, the brokenness within ourselves. We pray for our friends who suffer from ill health and the ill health of mind and heart around the world. Hear our pleas that recognize our joys and our pains. Listen to our celebrations and our tears as we enter your house with souls bared to you, our gracious creator. O oh Lord, as we lift them up, hear our prayers and guide us to serve faithfully. Gracious God, we spend too much time in your house thinking about rules and right behavior and everything that's wrong with our world. And indeed, these are our calling to contemplate, for there is much work to be done to free the captive, to right the wrongs of injustice. We spend too much time putting ourselves in your place, trying to control or worry about everything we cannot control. Oh God, we ultimately focus too much on the negative without looking at the goodness of the world. We waste too much time living without joy. We pray all these things in the name of the one coming very soon, the one we anticipate with joy, the Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I know last week when we did not meet in person, you know, you always worry about that in a financial way um, because we have so many financial obligations and to do without that giving is worrisome and yet here you are, and I know that you will sustain your church. I know that your giving comes with love from your heart. And so I would like to dedicate these gifts to our Lord. Would you please join with me in our prayer of dedication? In our gratitude, O oh God, we bring worthy gifts to honor the Messiah. May the brokenhearted be led to new celebrations. May the lowly among us come to know their true worth as persons chosen by you to do great things. By your mercy, may the hungry be fed, not only with bread, but also with opportunities to feed others. Our spirits rejoice in the coming of our Savior. Amen. Before we go to the hymn, I would like for us to also be in prayer for um, uh, Mike Woodyard, who is home with a cold today. And so we want to pray for Mike and also um, the Gray family. Um, they are on a little excursion. And uh, so I told them that we would pray for their safe travels. And so... Um, wanted to lift them up as well. Yes, indeed, indeed. And Betty Kenderdick, as she has her broken ankle and is recovering from that. Thank you, Mary Beth. I appreciate that. And so uh, we're going to sing O Little Town of Bethlehem. Oh, 
I wanted to share with you from Luke's Gospel, the first chapter, verses 67 through 79. Then Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke this prophecy. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty savior for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy and promise to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant, to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So this morning, we come to another of the first carols of Christmas. And this time the song of praise is on the lips of the priest, Zechariah. And what Zechariah is celebrating above all is how he sees the light at last overcoming darkness. Zechariah, remember, is the husband of Elizabeth and the father of John the Baptist. At the point in which he breaks out into this song that, that I just read for you, Zechariah has been mute for nine months. 
You see, when the angel Gabriel first came to visit Zechariah with the news that he and his wife, who and his wife is beyond childbearing age, that they would conceive and bear a child, Zechariah just couldn't believe it. And so as a result of his doubt, Zechariah was struck dumb until eight days after John was born, when he was circumcised and given his name. It was Zechariah who confirmed that this child would be called John. And, and then his tongue was finally loosened and he broke out into this song of praise. And what Zechariah is celebrating is that he sees at last God's fulfillment of his ancient covenant promises to deliver and to save his people. And that Zechariah's son, John, will be the one to introduce the saving Messiah to the world. So Zechariah says that John will be a prophet of the Most High God, preparing a way for him and telling people how God in his immense compassion will save the people from their sins. And Zechariah shares this vision of God, bringing light to those sitting in the shadow of darkness and death and guiding people onto the path of peace. As you are all well aware, people expected the Most High God, the Messiah, to be a conquering hero, someone who would sweep into the world quickly and vanish Israel's enemies. And the Jews fully expected that their enemies would suffer the same violent fate that they had been suffering for generations. But when Zechariah begins to prophesy, and this is the first prophecy among the Israelites in over 400 years, he tells a different story. His son, John, has come to show us the path to Jesus. And Jesus is coming to show us the path to peace, not by overthrowing enemies, but by dispelling the darkness of the world. So certainly, we all want Christmas to be a happy, joyful time. And we put in a lot of effort into making it so. We talked a few weeks ago about the perfect Christmas and all of our manufactured attempts to create something out of this world when what we really need is to celebrate God's coming into our midst through Jesus Christ. But here's the thing about celebrating Christ. In order for us to celebrate who Christ was and all that he did, we have to understand exactly what it is that Christ accomplished. And Zechariah pretty much sums it up for us here. Christ is the light of the world. He's overcome all the darkness. When I was serving in my first appointment as a solo pastor, back when God and I were children together, <laughs> I had an opportunity to get to know a wonderful and amazing woman. She was part of that congregation. She was a divorced mother, had two grown children. She worked as a nurse in a local hospital. And one night, after her shift was over, after 11 o'clock p.m., she was driving home and she came upon a young teenage girl whose car had broken down. Now this girl was, you know, trying to push the car and steer it at the same time over to the side of the road. So my friend Sarah stopped to help her and she told the girl, you get in and steer and I'll push from behind. And so the roads were icy, and a car came along with a drunk driver who lost control on the ice, and his car slammed into the back of Sarah and pinned her 
between the two vehicles. Her right leg was amputated immediately in the accident, and the doctors were able to save her badly mangled left leg. She spent months in rehab in the hospital, and one afternoon I went to visit her, and I noticed that, just like always, she was in amazingly high spirits, despite the fact that she had gotten the news of further delay in getting her prosthetic leg. So as I sat and talked with her, I finally asked her, how do you do it, Sarah? How do you keep your spirits so high when it seems like everything is going wrong? And she explained to me that she had no memory of the accident that caused her to lose her leg. But that as she sat in the hospital afterwards, she came to the realization that she would live the rest of her life without one of her legs, and she was overcome with sadness. And she said, I felt as if I was indeed in some kind of dark valley, just some shadow. And she said, I, I stayed there for several days. And so she explained, every day I prayed to God not to let the sadness win. And she said, I pray that prayer every day still, whether it's about my leg or whether it's about my kids or anything else. I pray that God will not let the sadness win. And you know what? It hasn't won yet. So here's the thing, we all experience sadness at some point or another in our lives. We all walk through the valley of the shadow and we're all faced with darkness, whether we experience it in our own lives or in the world or people around us. But Christmas is God's response to the brokenness and to the pain of this world. The birth of Jesus Christ is God's way of dispelling the darkness and bringing light into the world. We need this Christmas hope. In fact, we need Christmas now because we need it more than ever right now in our lives. And that's exactly what Zechariah was celebrating. For hundreds of years, the Jewish people had lived in what they felt was a period of silence. They were not hearing anything from the prophets of God. And in the meantime, they waited and they wondered and the Romans swept in and they began an oppressive occupational rule of their promised land. And the Israelites were scared. They were living under an unjust rule. They were subjected to violence because of their beliefs. But now they hear this prophecy from Zechariah. After hundreds of years of silence, this priest who has been mute for nine months begins to speak a prophecy of the coming Savior who will, will deliver his people from the darkness. No wonder he sang in joy. Even in the midst of darkness, we can be joyful and we can be hope-filled too. Because what God did once, God will do again. Just as he promised. And this is what celebrating Christmas is all about. God's work through Jesus Christ continues even now. In 1962, Martin Luther King Jr. was arrested in Albany, Georgia for holding a prayer vigil outside the Albany City Hall. And though King was only in jail for 15 days, it gave him the opportunity to finish a book that he had been working on. It was a collection of sermons that would be published 
a year later under the title Strength to Love. And it was during those days in this Albany jail that King penned some of the words that would become the most famous and often quoted from that book. In fact, we've heard them. We've seen them a lot in the last two years. And he wrote, the only way to defeat the darkness is by loving your enemies. Returning hate for hate multiplies hate. Adding deeper darkness to a night already devoid of stars gives us darkness that we cannot drive out, but only light can drive out the darkness. Hate cannot drive out the dark. Only love can do that. And Christmas is God's emphatic declaration that darkness will be driven out of this world once and for all because love has come. Mm. We are waiting for Christ's second coming when God will establish the kingdom here on earth for all time. But in this in-between time, we still see the signs of darkness all around us. That's why we need to celebrate each Christmas, to remember the light that shines in the midst of darkness. Because our God's deep compassion, the dawn from heaven, will break upon us. Zechariah sang to give light to those who are sitting in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide us on to a path of peace. Over 2,000 years ago, Christ's promised coming brought joy to the lives of many who were in fear and in hardship. And today we can rest secure in the same promise, even in the midst of darkness, the darkness of this world, the oppression that's going on right now. Christ, the light of the world, will return to drive out once and for all the darkness that haunts us. Darkness cannot, cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. My friends, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish it. May you know the truth of that promise this Christmas and find hope for all the days to come. Amen. Our hymn is Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
join with me in the benediction. Listen for the word of the prophets. Be open to the stirrings of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God has come to us. We rejoice and give thanks always. Give thanks to God, whatever your circumstances. We are thankful for the good news and we carry as we go out to serve. Amen.